basic facilities, uh, an integrated healthcare system. So there's a lot that needs to be done in India. So I said that there's a lot that needs to be done in India and I'm going back to my country. I'm going to do something there. So now coming to my personal experience, five years back in 2009, I bought a plot uh, under tender from Sitco. Five acres of plot I bought in New Bombay to build a multi-speciality hospital. Today is 2014, is the hospital ready? No, not at all. We are only three quarters of the way. There have been numerous problems and challenges. We paid a full price, tender price to Sitco at that time. They said, we will let you build one and a half FSI. We said, that's fine. But they said, please start with 0.5 FSI and then we will give you the rest of the permission. And like fools, I was inexperienced. So we built 0.5 FSI and then they said, no, you can't build anymore after one and a half years. They said, no, you can't build anymore. You need to get uh, coastal regulatory zone permission because now the land has fallen under CRZ. So we said, that's fine. We had to stop construction. We went to CRZ, we got the permission. So they gave us a permission for that, yes, uh, we give you the environmental and coastal regulatory clearance. You can go ahead and build one and a half FSI. When we gave the permission to Sitco, you know what they told us? Well, no, sorry, you can't do this. We do not accept the permission given by CRZ and the environmental people. And we were totally at their mercy because unless they agreed, we couldn't do anything. They said, if you're not happy, you can return the land back to us. So I said, what do you mean? You know, we have already spent a significant sum of money on this land, and now you expect us to return it back. So we came to a compromise. We said, okay, let us at least build one FSI, right? And then we are at least able to start the hospital. So we had to redesign the whole building. Can you imagine, we had built 400,000 square foot of building with three basements, with uh, provision for a modern proton beam center. We were bringing the latest technology from CERNs for putting a proton beam in this particular site. And we had to re-engineer the whole thing. We had to uh, use significant areas of the basement as clinical areas. When we went back to Sitco, they said, okay, now we will give you 0.5 FSI, but you have to pay 30,000 rupees per square foot extra in New Bombay. So this, is, this has been our experience. So my construction is still going on, but what I wanted to say was that has India changed much from what the Britishers encountered 300 years back? They came across many small kingdoms, many small rulers not wanting to act. Our bureaucrats were exactly the same. You know, the whole country was being ruled by bureaucrats. They delayed decision making by two years. They kept on just passing the buck from one another. I had to travel very frequently from the UK to make things happen. So my experience wasn't pleasant, but I have not given up. My hospital will be ready, and we will commission it next year in November. But uh, my experience in India has been difficult, but I still tell my colleagues and friends that what India needs today with a new political leadership is people from the Western world to bring their, their experiences of project management to make things happen on time. Today, if you look around in our country, most of our projects are delayed. Our roads are delayed. Our bridges are delayed. Our ports are delayed. Our uh, airports are delayed. So unless we change the process of decision making, unless we um, prompt our bureaucrats to make decisions early and to give us clear permissions to enable things to happen, we will not find the investment from the for, from people from outside that we need to rebuild our country. Our country needs a lot of money in spent in infrastructure and a huge amount of money spent in healthcare. And we need to attract doctors who have had education in India and have gone abroad. We need to tell them, come back. There are facilities in India to which you can come and you can provide good healthcare to the people here who need it so badly. This is all I have to say. Thank you. That was Dr. Sanjeev Kanoria. Dr. Kanoria actually raised a lot of pertinent issues on healthcare. And uh, 
some of the speakers in the morning uh, also had raised. And one was our average spending on the healthcare as part of the GDP. Of course, we are spending, uh, I would say, a very meager amount, somewhere around 4%, which is not comparable anywhere between uh, the developed and the Western countries, those who spend between somewhere around 8% to 14%. What would be the reasons for higher patient satisfaction in countries like Netherlands and Germany as compared to the US when actually they are spending less uh, as a percentage of GDP? I mean, these are pertinent questions. Dr. Kanoria raised some gray areas in India which continue to be, for the last so many years, our doctor density as well as hospital infrastructure, it appears Still, we haven't changed much. The bureaucracy, as well as the delays, actually, which indirectly contribute to a very poor uh, status of healthcare in our country. Thank you, Dr. Kanoria, for raising these pertinent issues. I now request Mr. Satya to please come on the stage to felicitate Dr. Kanoria. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the last session of the day of the 7th Annual Pharmaceutical Leadership Summit and Pharma Leaders Business Leadership Awards 2014. Make in India, healthcare reforms, insurance, innovations, investments, and infrastructure, empowering India's developing healthcare system, investing the healthcare solutions of tomorrow in difficult times. We are actually running a bit uh, behind schedule, we actually will now go straight away to the panel discussion, which is on healthcare reforms, make in India, insurance, innovations, investments, and infrastructure. The new age medical profession, patient-centered care of the patients, for the patients, and by the patients. I would now request Mr. Satya Brahma to take over from here for the panel discussion. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. With this, we come to the, the sessions and debates of the Pharma Summit 2014. Uh, before I move into the very brainstorming and uh, debatable issues of the panel discussion, I must uh, appreciate the efforts of Professor Sunil Despande for moderating the show, analyzing the speaker's topic one by one, trying to find out what they have spoken and putting things into perspectives. Uh, Professor Despande is presently the chairperson of the SIES. He has around 15 years of experience in, in marketing, consulting, and he has also worked with various multinational and domestic companies before taking assignment at SIES. When I talk to him is that he conveyed a message which was very power to, powerful to me that of bringing academics and management into the perspective and bridging the pharma industry and academics together. And to my mind, this is going to be the game changer. And I look forward to working with you for a longer term in this initiative. 
And I would like to ask someone to, you know, bring uh, the momento or a token of appreciation for Professor Deshpande. Can you please come on here? I did not say I know how to speak actually. Yeah. You want to take a break now? You want to, don't want to sit. So sit. All right, ladies and gentlemen, with this, uh, we are going to start the panel discussion of this evening, which I hope is going to be much more fiery, because we are going to discuss about uh, the perception of the Indian doctors. And the theme for this particular debate and discussion of this panel is, going about the, is talking about the medical profession itself and how, where the practice is going towards. Are we into the right directions? Is it patient-centric? Are the doctors listening to the doctors, or to the, to the patients, and ultimately giving a message to them? And to discuss on this, may I invite on stage Dr. Chandra Sekar, who is the Chairman and Managing Director of People Tree Hospitals. Can I have you on the dais, please? Celebrity cosmetic dermatologist, Dr. Ruby Tendon, who is the cosmetic dermatologist of uh, Dr. Ruby Tendon's Afterglow Laser Services. Can I have you there? Then my dear friend, uh, Professor Dr. Sasankar Joshi, consulting diabetologist and and the endocrinologist, can I have you there? Please have a seat. Then the person who defined sex in India here at this platform, Dr. Deepak Jumani, please. Then the man who is heading Amaya Clinic and the obesity consultant. Dr. Deepak Chaturvedi, please. The CEO of Dharmasila Hospital, Dr. Sandeep Chatra, please. Well, uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is a televised show, actually, in fact, we are shooting this and will be telecast uh, in a television channel. So I request all of you to maintain the proper silence on this. Hello and welcome to the seventh annual Pharmaceutical Leadership Summit and Business Leadership Awards 2014. And to set the ball rolling in the evening on the high voltage debates, we are having with us some of the signing stars of the Indian medical profession. To my left is Dr. Sandeep Chattrat, Dr. Deepak Chaturvedi, Dr. Deepak Jumani, Dr. Sosankar Joshi, Dr. Ruby Tendon, and Dr. Chandrasekhar. The format is very simple. I'll be taking one round each of five minutes each, sorry, two minutes each. Then I'll keep the ball rolling and I'll ask questions then. Let me start with you, Dr. Sandeep, then. Where do you think the medical profession is heading for now? Is it patient-centric or are we debating them? I think a uh, lot good things are happening in medical profession nowadays. And especially I talked in my presentation also with coming up of accreditations. Now the patient centricity has certainly increased. These things like soft skill training, things like being uh, available, what are patient rights, what are patient responsibilities. These have become a sort of a norm now for all the hospital people, for the entire profession to know. And patients are also very much aware in today's time. 
with increase in super specialty care the uh, the the risks associated with each 